in the rolling livestock country northwest of Fort Worth. A dedicated effort is being made to preserve and perpetuate the genetic characteristics of the original Appaloosa horse. Welcome to True Appaloosas. This is Lily. She's a three-year-old. We're going to start her under saddle for the first time today. I've done some groundwork with her, but uh, this will be the first time she's had a saddle on. The Appaloosa horse really began its evolution in Mongolia, so its origins are oriental, not occidental, like other American breeds. The early records of uh, Genghis Khan's Thousand Mile campaigns describe the small, hardy horses of different colors comprising different mounted regiments. Descendants of those original Appaloosa war horses can still be found in Mongolia today. Nobody's really sure how the first Appaloosas got to North America. The new theory is by way of Chinese or Russian explorers to our west coast. That makes sense because the only American Indian tribes that really had them were in the Pacific Northwest. The Nez Perce are credited with being the first American tribe to practice selective breeding of the Appaloosa. Trappers and mountain men originally came to the Palouse River area and referred to these colorful horses as Palouse horses or Appaloosi. Thus the term Appaloosa evolved from that slang. For 200 years, the Nez Perce and Palouse tribes used their Appaloosas for everything from running buffalo to war. The Nez Perce tribe actually fought the U.S. Cavalry longer than any other tribe. By 1877, their chief Joseph decided to lead what was left of his people which by then was about 700 old men, women, and kids, to join Sitting Bull in Canada. It was a horseback journey of about 1,500 miles over some of the roughest terrain in North America. General Miles' cavalry pursued, but his government mounts were no match for the Nez Perce Appaloosas. Finally, 40 miles from Canada, Joseph stopped to rest his people, who were in pretty bad shape by then. Miles brought his troops up and surrounded them, finally forcing the Nez Perce to surrender. That Nez Perce evasion of the U.S. Cavalry over that distance from Oregon to Montana is probably the greatest horseback accomplishment since Genghis Khan's time. It marked the Appaloosa as the most capable breed on the continent and the one the U.S. government most feared. General Miles then ordered the remaining Appaloosas rounded up and destroyed. Bounties were offered on any that escaped that slaughter and a federal law existed until 1935 prohibiting the breeding of Appaloosa to Appaloosa. No other horse breed in history experienced that type of outright massacre and genetic destruction. The Appaloosa had actually become a victim of its own remarkable qualities. I remember the old type foundation Appaloosas I'd see as a kid during the 1960s. Crossing to other breeds have reduced the number of these true Appaloosa types to a fraction of it, what, what was once the largest, the third largest breed in the country. This time, the enemy wasn't the cavalry or hysterical government. The enemy was a malign pursuit of refinement, the ill-founded will to impose on it a general smoothness and delicacy uncharacteristic of the Appaloosa breed. The biggest problem is that the Appaloosa Horse Club is the only breed registry that permits crossbreeding with other breeds. This has created a hybrid horse that has retained little of the true Appaloosa genetics and is virtually useless outside the Appaloosa Horse Club show ring. I and a few other foundation breeders plan to change all that. Our first ride is really just getting uh, her used to having a passenger. I usually don't start these babies until they're three years old. I used to start them until they're, when they're about two, but I wait now. There's no problem waiting that extra year. And emotionally, they're in a little bit better shape for it. It's really not the saddle that freaks the horse out, it's the cinches that are the strangest sensation to him.
you know, when you tighten those cinches the last time, every single horse is going to buck. Normally I'll take the halter off, but in this case I didn't have a chance. You started without it. And there we go. Usually they go around about three times before they settle down. She's pretty good with that feeling, so I'm just letting her know that uh, I'm not going to be up there forever. Now ask for a little forward motion. And just try to get her to bend that neck a little bit. That's really the key to it. And as soon as she agrees to bend, then I release the pressure. Right there was a good give. Good bend.
Now she can pretty much go wherever she wants. I don't even use a, uh, a bridle on them for, for uh, anywhere from th another three months to six months. Just ride them with a the halter. Just let her go wherever she wants. They really can't do anything wrong this first ride. It's just the idea of getting used to having that saddle on somebody on their back. The rural American lifestyle. It's how we work. It's how we play. It's how we learn and how we enjoy the finer things in life. How we take care of our animals tend to the land. It's a way of life. Has been for hundreds of years. Now there's a whole new way for rural America to watch TV. My stallion Feather is seven years old now. I bought him from Diane Adams when he was uh, 18 months. He's pretty good natured and a pretty handsome horse. Uh, Feather's confirmation is really an exact likeness of the Fippin Appaloosa confirmation model. It's really uncanny when you compare the two. Feather's pedigree goes back to Joker B, who was a real all-around horse. And you could use him for just about anything. Most of the issues you have with stallions are dominance issues. All they want to do is survive and replicate, and they'll pretty much flatten anything that gets in their way. The challenge is really to engage their mind and get them focused on something to take that hostile nature away. And really the only way to get them to respect you, or any horse really to get them to respect you, is to get them to move their feet. That's how the hierarchy is established among uh, pastured horses or wild horses if you watch them. I wanted Feather to mature before I bred him. I wanted to be sure he'd be athletic enough and that his gait and that his strides were good and to make sure he carried his rider well. You were just going to do a few simple exercises to get him engaged before I get on him. Okay, now he's ready to ride. He's got a nice smooth trot. His mother, um, the damn Ebony Spotted Cloud, was a shuffler, and Feather picked up a good bit of that. Picks up the canter very nicely, moves right out. He's got a nice stride. I don't really try to collect them. I let them move right out, really stretch it out. And here you can really see that stride covers ground. Juanita, my four-year-old, is a perfect example of what I'm trying to achieve in my breeding program. Her great-grandsire was chief of Four Mile, which was one of the most famous Appaloosas that ever lived. It was a three-time world performance champion and uh, Hall of Famer. Juanita's got tremendous athleticism. She moves like a dream, and uh, she, she, she nearly levitates when she's trotting in the pasture by herself. She's got a sensible mind, a very determined dis disposition. She was like that as a foal. You can see it in her eyes, she's very determined. Like a natural competitive thing.
Now that she's four and I've been riding her regularly, I can see that she's going to be great for polo. She's really tough as nails and really likes to go. And she's also a little bit contemptuous of other horses, which is actually a positive thing for polo. Uh, polo horse can't be intimidated by the other horses because there is frequent contact. You can do just about anything with a horse like Juanita. Ken has also found the Appaloosa to be naturally suited to polo. This is Comanche Sue. I bought her in the summer of uh, 09. And I've been, actually I bought her to breed, but I've been using her for polo and she's worked out fabulous. She's now my fastest horse. Her stamina is just unbelievable and uh, she just doesn't get tired. Turns great. Really worked out great for polo. This is Max. He's been a super all-around horse for me. I, I got him when he was eight and he really uh, had never even had a saddle on him before, but I fox hunted him cut cows with him, roped off him, and now I've been playing polo with him for about a year. Highly intelligent, big play drive, and just loves to please you. He's got a nice smooth trot. This is the first chucker, and I'm on Comanche Sioux. Covering that fellow in the white. And there's a spectacular missed backhand shot. Here Joe picks up the ball perfectly. He's really a great player. Makes a nice smooth shot. Uh, sets the ball up good. And I just moved Comanche Sue out. A couple strides, she's gone. Yeah, I think I fouled up the shot, but you can see how she just moved right out. She's really fearless and her strides are just like effortless. Takes you right to the play. Here's a second chucka on Max. And the other horses are tired now. We have a play going down the other end of the field. And Max just moves right out. Same deal here. It's actually the last chuck of the game. And uh, my man's got the ball, he's ready to score, and I'm backing him up. And you can see we just blow by the other horses. Max has plenty of juice. I'm 54 years old and I feel like I'm just getting started. True Appaloosas maintains an excellent band of broodmares, the cornerstone of a solid breeding program. Four Mile's 13 years old. She's uh, the grandsire of Chief of Four Mile, which again was a three-time national champion Hall of Fame horse. Foals would be perfect for polo, that's uh, Juanita's dam, or endurance. She's a real dynamo, great confirmation. Secretary's 13-year-old broodmare, uh, actually the great-great-granddaughter of uh, Secretariat, who, uh, a little-known fact, was bred to an Appaloosa for his first breeding. Her foals would be great hunter-jumpers. Um, I've, I've uh, fox-hunted her. She's a great field hunter, good for endurance. Good jumper, big horse, 16 hands, actually the biggest horse on the place now.
can do is a little bit more refined. She's 18 now and she's still fine to have foals. Um, they'd be suitable for hunter jumper, field hunters, um, endurance. She's a great color producer, so if you really want a colorful foal, you're just about guaranteed to get it with her. Comanche Sue's 13 now, and I'm going to breed her. Um, we just saw her in the polo field. I'd like to play polo with her for two or three more years before I breed her. Uh, great uh, polo prospects her foals would be, and uh, they'd be great for endurance too. Very fast. Very athletic. Alejandra's four now. She's uh, a big uh, filly, actually a married age four. And I've been uh, riding her very regularly. Going to fox hunt her this year for her first uh, time. Great field hunter prospect, good hunter jumper prospect. Just a real nice horse. And uh, not ready for hard work yet, but regular work. So I'd like to see her go to a good owner. To learn more about preserving the original genetic characteristics of the historic Appaloosa, contact True Appaloosas.